Hey you, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, and let's continue. So what we wanna do is click the checkout button and have it display something here so that we can uh, enter some data. So for example, we want to have the customer, we ask the customer how much they pay and then we enter that value in there and then uh, do something with that result. Now, before we go here, let me explain a little bit how these models work. Because if I click here and something comes up here, uh, it, it seems like uh, models are special objects or something like that, but in reality, they really aren't. So a model is, uh, let's look at the bootstrap model first so that uh, I can explain how, what a model is to start with. So if I go to, now luckily we have Bootstrap here, so we can use the Bootstrap model, but I want to explain, uh, first of all, how the whole process works so that even when we're using Bootstrap, it's just a, a convenience and not a, um, a necessity, yes. So if we go to Bootstrap documentation and we go to components and model, we'll see this page right here and it's got good examples like a live demo. You can click on this and then you see this model here. So let me explain a few things that are happening here. First of all, um, first of all, the scrolling is disabled. So I can't scroll here. And then there's a black thing around here. And then there's this uh, window that comes up with a few buttons here. So I can close and it goes, I can click on it, uh, click save changes and uh, all close there, right? So how exactly does this work? So this is pretty easy. So to create on your own, but uh, easy doesn't always translate to time saving. So just because it's easy doesn't mean that you're going to do it quickly. So this is why sometimes we just resort to using Bootstrap because it's already programmed and uh, it's easy to do. But let me show you how you can do it on your own first. So now if you uh, know how HTML works, you know that uh, the first item to be added to the page uh, the page starts from the top and goes to the bottom, right? So if I add, like this item is added earlier than this one. So it means if these uh, uh, objects were to overlap for any reason, this one will be on top of the other one. So the one that comes latest will always be on top. That's how the Z index works in here. So um, keeping that in mind, because we want the model to be on top of everything else, it means we have to put it as the last thing down here. So let's give it a shot and uh, see what happens. So I'm just going to go to my app and views and let's go to the home view right here. And of course it uses JavaScript to do all that. Now, right before we start our JavaScript, let me add some HTML because really what a model is, is simply HTML, nothing more, nothing less. So let's go here right before the script and we can put something like this and say models. That way our models come as the last thing. So, and models. Okay, so a comment there just to remind us what this area is about. So let's just add a div. Now, if we look at this model here and uh, wait, launch, we have um, this black thing here. So what we need to do is create a black thing. So how can we do that? Well, let's add some styles, shall we? So here I'm going to first say we want something with a background color of uh, black, okay? Background color. And then I want to make its uh, width 100%, uh, same as its height, 100%. And then let's make, um, what do we do here? So let's see what, what, we, what we've done so far. So if I refresh, I won't see anything here because my div contains nothing. So I will uh, type some data a little bit there and refresh. 
as you can see there's a black thing down here but we don't want it down here we want it up here to cover the entire page as this is doing so we need to change its positioning so we're going to say position it in an absolute manner so i'm going to say position absolute so if i do this now uh, there we go still down there that's not cool so let's tell it exactly where to position itself so i'm going to say left should be zero pixels and the top as well should be zero pixels you can also do bottom um, etc etc even though just top and left should be enough because we have a 100 percent width and height so you see there this is happening now occasionally you find things that are popping out like this this means the z index for that item is quite high so we can just inspect this element and see what the z index is for it and then we can just add one more on top of that so let's see if it's actually displaying here somewhere and it doesn't look like let's see border radio okay so then maybe the div itself let's see opacity one element hmm z index doesn't seem to be here so what we can do is just do a guesswork uh thingy here since i can't seem to find it i'm sure if i take my time here i'm going to find the z index for this thing but no matter what we will do is we'll put a z index over here and just maybe let's start with a usually you start with small numbers but let's do 10 okay so 10 is good let's try 4 since uh, 10 has worked just fine so we need it to be as low as possible so let's try 2 we don't want to go too high on this one so 2 does show and then it means let's go a bit further so let's put four and leave it there okay so like we've done here there's content there from this div and um, let's try absolute let's try fixed let's see how that works okay much better so background fixed is better than absolute because the other one allows us to scroll away from the item which is not looking good so instead we go for the fixed but the background color is too dark so we want some transparency here so what we're going to do is add some transparency and i'll do that using you can either use rgb or you can use the hex value I'm just going to use hex so zero zero is for the red zero zero is for the green and zero zero for the blue so that means a black color but then i'm going to put half transparency so since uh, the numbers move from zero to f this is how uh, hex values are so when you reach nine then you go to a b c d up to f so it's a 16 base uh, number base 16 number so here I'm going to put what's half of uh, because f is like 15 so what's half of 15 or what's half of 16 is 8 so let's put 8 8 actually maybe 7 7 should be correct because we start from 0 so let me refresh and this is 50% transparency so as you can see here this box remains like so which is pretty good and uh, the transparency is way too much so let's lower it a bit let's go down to maybe four four and let's refresh oops i'm going in the wrong direction so let's go to aa which is like the 10 10 right there we go so it's entirely up to you how dark you want this to be let's try bb let's see how different this one uh, we're pretty much there i guess okay so that's fine now let's remove this uh, text over there and we can remove it okay very good now in here this is where we're going to put our uh, div that we want to work with 
So let's add some styles as well here. So this div is going to have a, let's say a width of 500 pixels. This is entirely up to you, of course, a height of uh, maybe 400 pixels, or maybe height, you can leave it on auto. Um, let's put minimum height, right? Let's say mean height so that at least it's on there. And then let's put a background color of white like so okay now we want to center this item because from the beginning you see it's over there which is not pretty not very good let's add some padding of 10 pixels and then what we do next um let's center it so to center it i'm just going to say left uh, i want to position it absolutely so what i'll do is it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. You can just do a margin um, auto like this to center it. So let's see that. And there it goes. And then you can put a margin at the top. So say margin uh, top like this. And you say maybe 100 pixels like that. That's entirely up to you. So you can employ any positioning tricks that you want uh, to apply here but there we go that's how it is and you can also add a box shadow to the thing if you want but this is all good now we can add an input in here and use some bootstrap so i'm going to say input uh, type text and then let's do add some classes so class um, form control and uh, let's put a placeholder enter amount paid something like this and let's refresh and there we go enter amount paid like that uh -huh. then let's put a large heading here let's put h5 and say uh, checkout and i want to center this so i'm just going to add the center tag like so and move the other one there so that it's within the center tag i will put oh, i almost put a break tag there but it maybe it's not necessary okay so check out and there we go and so we can have console and uh, next button there so down here of course let's add some break tags break tag uh let's use button shall we so we'll say button uh button one and button two so here we'll say cancel, and then this will say next, right? Let's add some classes. Let's put btn, btn uh, primary. Uh, I don't know, this one, second, secondary. And uh, refresh, and there we go. All right, so let's move the next button to the other side at least so this is simple float so float end and that should cover it okay very good i think we have everything we need so everything can be added to your specification let me put a break tag here i think uh, it will help let's refresh okay there we go so enter amount paid and then once we click next we need another model that will show us um the change and all that but for now we need our cancel button and next button to do stuff and then we need a way to activate uh this thing okay so that's the checkout button there so right now once we refresh it comes on automatically which is not what we want so what we will do is create a, uh, a style at the top here so let's just add some styles now they don't need to be at the top here they can be anywhere but um, i just like to add styles at the top so let's just add some styles and uh, let's see here so i want to create the hide class and just say display none like so okay great now i also want to add a little animation but 
maybe for now let's um, let's not add it yet so this one is a model uh, let's add a class of hide and then let's give it uh, another that way it doesn't show so let's come back here and if I refresh you see it's not here anymore and things are working again now what I want is to add more so I'll say JS um, let's see what could I call this one amount paid so this is up to you what you call it this is just for identification so what I want is to show amount paid input amount paid model that's what I'll call it okay copy so here let's create a function that will show that item so real quick here let's go to the bottom and say function show um, amount paid model model yes yes okay so in order to show this let's grab the actual item so var div is equal to uh, document dot query selector and we know don't forget the dot there and then what I'll say is div let's just call it my div yeah so my div dot class list so I want to check the class list it has dot remove so let's remove one class called hide like that okay very cool now we need to activate it of course so I'm going to copy this and so to hide it is just the opposite of this so I'm just going to do this and um, duplicate and put a hide here and same thing instead of remove we're going to add a class to it just like that simple and straightforward so copy this and let's go to the checkout button where is the checkout button check out right here so right here we add an on click listener and paste that and then on the model itself we have a console button so let's add a an on click as well and this one is going to the hide function simple and straightforward so refresh and if I now click checkout this is what I see and if I click console there it is okay so that's how models uh, work in principle pretty straightforward here yeah. but bootstrap comes with its own uh, which has some animation as well so I'm going to show you how to add those animations as well and uh, that way it it has an incoming thingy like this okay Alrighty then.